Okay everyone, so um, just want to do a video uh, today on the, the audio amp. Um, what I've decided to do for this particular build is use um, two amps, two op amps. Um, I'm going to use a, uh, an NE 5534P, so that's the, uh, the low noise version uh, op amp. Uh, if you look at the spec sheet, one of the uh, use cases for that particular op amp is a, uh, an audio preamp. So I'm going to use that um, as an audio preamp and then follow that up by a, an LM 380N which is a, uh, a 2.5 watt audio amp which has a fixed gain of uh, 34 dB which, which turns out to be so 20 log AV equals 34 so it has a fixed gain of, of uh, 50, voltage gain of 50. So this is the uh, the circuit which um, we're just seeing over in the background there uh, under test. So this one here is the 5534 and what I've done is I've um, set the non-inverting input to be halfway between 0 and VCC by using two 10k ohm resistors. 10k is about right um, for 13.8 volts uh, we don't have a huge amount of current flowing through there so uh, that's that's not too bad and certainly well within the, the power ratings of those two resistors there. So that uh, sets um, the output to be halfway between uh, ground and the VCC rail and uh, that point's also AC bypassed just so that we don't have any AC noise that could potentially get across here uh, interfering with our, our input and interfering with the output so that's at AC earth. Um, in this particular configuration the voltage gain is set by these two resistors here and the feedback resistor and are in and in this particular case um, I want the overall gain for this to be a hundred plus so if we've got a fixed gain of 50 for the second stage then I need to have a voltage gain of at least two on the input um, so what I've ended up using is a 47 K ohm resistor and a 15 K uh, which gives us because it's in the, the inverting input, minus 47k of 15k equals 3.13. So um, that's that's good. We're happy with that. Um, a couple of things to, to point out with the circuit. Uh, if we start with this capacitor here, this one nanofarad capacitor sitting across the 47k ohm resistor, if you take that off, then the circuit still works quite fine. But you know, if you get any capacitance or your hand coming close to the inputs, then you start to get some of the broadband stations or the old AM radio stations coming through. So uh, you put that 1K, say again, that 1 nanofarad capacitor across there, and that just totally disappears, which is good. The other interesting thing, for the LM380N, if you look at the spec sheet, it talks about this little circuit at the end, a 2.7 ohm resistor and a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Again, if you take that out for low output levels, um, when I say low, for most of the range, it's fine, it's not a problem. But if you get to really high volume and you're really starting to push this hard, then you do get a little bit of interference, a little bit of fairiness. Um, I was thinking about throwing it, showing it on the scope, but it's horrendously loud. Um, and it only happens when you've got the amplifier, say again, the speaker hooked up. So it's got obviously something to do with the inductance of the speaker. But like I say, if you throw that little circuit in there as per the data sheet, that noise there at very high volume levels just disappears and it's a nice clean, uh, a nice clean sine wave. Uh, four coupling capacitors. Um, just keep things simple and just use 100 nanofarads around the place. Uh, apart from the, uh, the output of the LM380N, uh, per the spec sheet, um, a good sized um, uh, electrolytic there, so using a 470. Uh, bit of bypassing going on on the VCC rails for both amplifiers. So just a 10 ohm resistor, and then on the uh, the uh, amp side of that, uh, 100 nanofarad and 100 microfarad caps. Uh, and when I solder this up, I'll be making sure that um, these are nice and close to the actual chip itself. We don't have any uh, room there for interference to get in. Um, so yeah, it's a relatively straight, well in fact it is a straightforward circuit um, and works particularly well. So back to the setup, um, we've got down here just a, a Pico uh, oscilloscope um, that also has an arbitrary 
waveform generator. So at the moment I'm outputting a sine wave which is sweeping from uh, 300 hertz through to 2 kilohertz. And as we can see on the scope there that um, the actual the, the bandwidth of the of the amplifier is quite good and we're only starting to see just a little bit of uh, attenuation um, at the highest frequencies but that's uh, that's working quite well so let's put the speaker back on again uh, what I what I didn't actually show and let me just disconnect that Let's, we'll have the uh, neighborhood around um, for a volume control We've got in between the the 5534 and the LM380N uh, is that 10k ohm pot there, uh, and that's just basically driving uh, the non-inverting input for that to crop in. The uh, the inverting input is, is floating, and that's as per the um, the data sheet. There's some example uh, amplifiers there. So um, I suppose we could uh, what we could do is turn off the the sweep. So let's turn off the sweep. Um, we'll put that back up to just an arbitrary 1k and we'll put the speaker back on in fact what I might do is just disconnect the input so we'll put that back on again we'll disconnect the input and we'll see there so at the moment that's pretty good we'll turn the volume up I've got the pot wide backwards but it's just because it's a breadboard pot if you disconnect that you can actually start to hear that interference coming through and if you listen very carefully it's a bit hard we've got a storm going on outside that um, see my hands go Fingers coming close. Again, the old AM station there coming through. So if I was to, uh, without blowing anything up, put it back into there. Uh, where are we? Uh, I never mind doing this. Now it just disappears. So um, of course that's just touching the input, so I expect that. So yeah, so quite an effective that. Um, that uh, one nanofarad capacitor sitting across uh, that 47 ohm, uh, K ohm resistor. Um, I won't demonstrate disconnecting that small 2.7 ohm resistor with the 0.1 microfarad capacitor, but suffice to say at very high volumes, um, if you were to break that circuit, then you start to see that fuzzy noise coming through, um, coming through on, uh, on, the, um, on the output. Just overdriving that a little bit. What I'm going to do there is, um, once I, I build this up and put it into the actual radio itself, I'll muck around with that RN resistor there, just to, to set the overall gain for stage one, that at maximum volume pot I don't overdrive the output. So at the moment this is in a, uh, a test configuration, and I will, like I say, for RN, which is currently a 15k ohm resistor, I'll, I'll modify that to drop the gain of that preamplifier down from currently 3.13 or 3 down to you know 2 or even further. So um, like I say we'll adjust that in the actual circuit itself. Rightio, so um, I think that's probably all for now. We'll uh, look to solder that up um, and then we will continue on with the radio. Any questions to sing out? But otherwise um, yeah, just a nice easy way of producing a uh, you know, two and a half watt into an 8 ohm speaker um, amplifier with a nice low, uh, low noise uh, op amp at the front. So uh, quite an effective circuit. One of these days I might look at a, uh, a push-pull amplifier with some, some transistors, but you know, there's quite a bit of literature around that. You know, this is a, quite, a, quite a good way of going. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Um, any questions, sing out. And uh, I'll say 73s.